It's the video you've all been waiting for. Shocks upside down. You might have seen a few pictures or comments on Facebook, things like that, of cars with their shocks the wrong way up. And it seems crazy, right? Why are people doing this? And where has all this come from? So what are the theories behind it? And why are people doing it? Well, hopefully in this video, I'm going to try and answer these questions, provide a few theories about what it might be doing to the car and why it's working. So yeah, let's get straight into it. So why did we first try this? What made us think, let's put the shocks upside down and maybe make ourselves look really silly? Well, we were at a track and, you know, we were just starting to test for indoors. It was about October time and we were just struggling with like, when we accelerated out of the corners, it felt like all the weight was transferring back and we were just understeering a bit out of the corners. So we were really just trying to reduce the weight transfer of the car. We wanted the car to stay more consistent between on and off throttle. Didn't want that weight transfer to change the handling of the car. So, I mean, that's the main things we're turning the shocks over is you're taking a lot of weight from up high and you're moving it down low. So that is the main theory really of why we tried it, just to reduce the center of gravity and along with that, reduce the weight transfer of the car. And we tried it and it really did work. We gained a lot of steering when we're on throttle exiting the corners and it did seem a lot faster to drive. And that made us think, if it reduces weight transfer on the, on the two wheel drive, how will it work on the four wheel drive? One of the big historical problems with four wheel drive indoors is the weight transfer of them between on and off throttle. You see the cars with front wheels in the air and then back wheels in the air as they're braking. They've just got a lot of traction indoors and it can cause these problems with weight transfer. So the first thought when it worked on two wheel drive is how will it go on this car? And so we tried it on the four wheel drive. Obviously it's a lot easier to do the front as well on the four wheel drive because you don't have to take loads off the arm to do it. So we ran it on both ends and we tested it a good few times on the four wheel drive. And again, it really just kept the car so much flatter, especially on throttle wasn't wanting to transfer as much weight back and lift the front wheel. So yeah, we found it to be a big improvement on that as well. So obviously we did a bit of testing with it, a good bit of running with it. And then Tommy went to the Florida carpet championships and he ran it on both cars. And I think that's where people kind of noticed and quite a few people started trying it then. So yeah, from there, pretty much the rest is history. A lot of, a lot of people have tried it. A few other brands and people are running it as well. Okay, so the advantages and disadvantages. Well, we've already gone over the weight transfer. Since the center of gravity is lower on the shocks, the car doesn't transfer as much weight, which obviously has quite a few benefits for carpet racing. Now, also another advantage is that there's less actual momentum to the roll of the car. Now, this is because there's not as much weight attached up high to the shock towers which moves as the car rolls. So imagine you're going through a chicane, the car's rolling one way, then the other. If you've got less weight attached to the shock towers up high, then there's not as much momentum to the roll of the car. So it can change direction easier and more quickly. So since the arms are just, since the shocks are just attached to the arms and they're not moving really as the car rolls, there's less weight that is moving in that scenario. So it allows the car to change direction quicker and generally feel a lot more nimble as well. Now, the big disadvantage is that since the shock bodies are attached to the arm, there is more unsprung weight. Now this is bad when you get to sort of bumpy scenario, you know, the wheels got to really follow the track because when there's more weight attached to that wheel, it's always going to be more difficult to control over the bumps. So that is the big disadvantage. Now also, having the shocks low down and not transferring as much weight back might lose you a little bit of forward drive, especially on the two wheel drive in like lower grip conditions. So sometimes you want that weight to transfer back as you accelerate and the shocks upside down is not going to help you with that. Okay, so quickly I'm just going to show you how to put the shocks upside down on the back of the two wheel drive. So you just need to take the standoff and the screw out of the top of the shock tower, just like that. Then you're going to pop them through the shock cap there and you're just going to do them up tight together to make a whole unit through the shock cap that you can then bolt to the bottom of the arm. So then you take the whole thing, you bolt it there to the bottom of the arm and once you've done that, 
you can get another screw to put through the shock tower with it should be the same length as the original one that you took out to use so just just another screw like the same one as before then you're just going to bolt a flange nut to that pop a two mil spacer on put the shock eyelet on and put another flange nut on after that and there you go that's that done so that process i just showed for the two wheel drive is the exact same for the back of the four wheel drive if you want to try it on there as well. The only difference for the front of the four wheel drive is that it is better if you use the short 10 millimeter standoff off the front of the two wheel drive and Dremel a little bit off the arm. It just keeps the shocks much straighter and they don't bind up as much as they would do if they were more length back. So that's how you do it on the two cars. The reason we do it on the front of the four wheel as well and not the two wheel drive is because on the two wheel drive you would have to dremel the arm almost until it like it didn't exist anymore and it would just break much too easily so we only do it on the rear of the two wheel drive but the four wheel drive it's pretty easy to do on both ends so we do run it on both ends of the car so hopefully you've enjoyed this video it's cleared up a little bit of the speculation around why people are running their shocks the wrong way up so yeah, if you enjoyed it, like the video, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.